Hi guys, my name is Melody and thanks for stopping by. And in today's video, we're going to do a booktube wrap up of 2020. I haven't done this. I know it's February and I know what day it is. It's February the 14th. Now I do have dogs in the background, so they may bark or you may see a tail or whatever, just come around and that's them. I believe he's currently playing with squeaky toy, so that's what the noise is. So I'm just going to run down all the books that I've read, give you what I've put on Goodreads as the stars. If you want more in-depth knowledge about these books, um, please go and look at the videos that I have previously posted because I usually go in quite a bit of depth on those videos. Um, this one's just going to be a sort of catch-all roundup of what I've read and the stars I gave them. So. Starting on the 1st of, or well, no, the 5th of January, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and I gave that a good five stars. That one is by Taylor Jenkins Reid. That is a brilliant book. It's a brilliant piece of writing, and I do highly recommend that book. The next book I'll get on to is If You Tell, A True Story of Murder, Family Secrets, and the Unbreakable Bond of Sisterhood by Greg Olson. That is a true crime book. It's in regards uh, to abuse of children. So I would, if you have any trigger points about that, I would suggest skipping this book. However, I did give it four stars. It was, I guess I would have to say it is okay for the period it was good but the content sort of got me so that was a, a solid four stars well it might have been three and a half um please do see the videos below for actual complete uh representation of my thoughts on these books the next book was conviction by denise mina that's a scottish author and i gave that book five stars it was brilliant there's a podcast in the book and you're going off of what's going on here and it's totally um a mystery that's got to be solved and it's very good and next one again is true crime it, it was call me god the Untold Story of the DC Sniper Investigation, and that's by Jim Clemente, um, who we all know from um, the, what is it? Oh, I'm just getting here. The Golden State Killer. Jim Clemente also did that one as well. Now that's an Audible original. Um, I would highly recommend this if you didn't know the story of the DC Sniper. It does have interviews with uh, victims, uh, family members, everything like that, and is absolutely brilliant because it tells the background of who who's involved in this crime and who is the who is suffering from this crime. It's not just a case of this is what happened sort of thing. The next book I read was Mine Hunter Inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit, and that was by John E. Douglas. Uh, Johnny Douglas was, well, is uh, one of the founding members of the FBI, and that uh, tells the story of how the FBI got started. Um, it is, I believe there is a series on Netflix called Mindhunter, which is loosely based on this. It does have some of the same uh, stories in it. However, things are changed up for cinematic, um, like, uh referenced so that it can be more interesting to the public. I gave that one a four stars. The next one I read was Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. And I gave that one a solid five stars on here. I might have been four and a half. I don't know. Like I said, just a little low. I'm just going off of what uh, Goodreads is telling me. Um, but that one is a really good story. It's about a girl with mental health disorder, uh, her relationship with her mother, work, and other people around her. Uh, the next one I read was The House by the Lock. Uh, that's by Kirsty Wark. And I gave that one four stars. And that was actually a really good read. Um, so there's like some mystery. There's some flashbacks um, going into what actually happened at the at the house um and about their parents um it's it's a very deep book it 
and the four stars for that one on here. The next book I've read was The Weird Sisters Discworld number six, which is number two by Terry Pratchett. And I gave that one a four. Um, I really liked it, um, but it was not my favorite of the Terry Pratchett books. Um, I think I was trying to go through all the Terry Pratchett books, but I didn't end up making it through it just yet, but I will continue those. Um, probably when I am back to driving my car, because I do listen to those on audio, um, so that I can soak in the readings because the, the readings make it more alive for me. The next book I read again was another true crime book. This is all the, all the true crime books I'm talking about. Most of them are for, uh, the true, a, a true crime book club. And that's, uh, also on Goodreads and you'll find it, um, on, um, Peter Mon's channel, um, on YouTube as well. You can find it there. Um, and also Ginger Gonzo reads on Instagram. Um, that was the, uh, True Count of Serial Murder and that's by Walter Gilmore. I give that a three stars. Um, I must not just not enjoyed that book as much. Um, that's in regards to a male who is, um, a man in, um, Alaska who is a, a, mur a serial murderer but he's also a family man um and he's a baker in the town and that's where he gets his name and the FBI does involve this and there's a movie about it I did watch the movie I believe it was Nicolas Cage in the movie and I'm was it Nic Nicolas Cage and I can't remember who else was it and it's one of those things where you either get a bad or a good Nicolas Cage and I think it was when and I think he was the one who was trying to find the guy and then I remember the other one and the other guy I know his name but I can't remember it right now but he was in that movie what was it um the one about records oh I can't remember lo-fi hi-fi something like that anyway we'll move along so the next book I read was The Art of Not Falling Apart by Christina Patterson, and I gave that a five stars. And that book was uh, basically a memoir about um, some various troubles in her life. And she goes and interviews people with the same troubles and see how, how they get to the other side sort of thing. Then, then the next book I read was Backstory by David Mitchell. I believe I thought this was a good three and a half and not a four. Um, because this is basically, uh, he's reading different thing or he's writing, these are different columns from places they use wrote in the newspaper and out of context and out of time, it wasn't as funny as what it probably had been in context in time sort of thing. Then I read the United States of Abs Absurdity, Untold Stories from American History, and that's a, by, uh, Dave Anthony and Gareth Reynolds. Uh, they're both comedians. They do the dollop. If you don't know, it's a really good history uh, podcast, but it's also funny. Uh, they make joy jokes to lighten up the subject sometimes because sometimes the subjects can be fairly dark, um, but it's absolutely brilliant and I recommend it 100%. Um, that is a five star rating for that book because it's basically just little historical facts and interesting bits of history that may not be taught or known about. The next four books I read for school and I did not grade any of them because that was unnecessary. So I read The Iliad by Homer, The Odyssey also by Homer, On the Good Life by Marcus Tullius, Tullius Cicero, and The Aeneid, Aeneid in English by Virgil. So there you go. There's four books I read for school. Then I read, well, on Peter Mond's YouTube channel, um, it was Peter Likes Books. I read, I, well, I played this, The Before Now and After Then by Peter Mond. He read the book out on there and I listened to it as an audio book and I gave it five stars. It was an absolutely brilliant fit first book uh, for an author as well as the subject matter is really good and quite deep. Um, there are some criticisms that he gives them themselves but to be honest I really enjoyed that book. 
Uh, the next book I read was Dead Ends, The Pursuit, Conviction, and Execution of Female Serial Killer Eileen Warnos, The Damsel of Death. And that was by Joseph Michael Reynolds. And I gave that a three star. Definitely did not like that as much. I don't know if I gave a 2.5 or a three. And then also with along with that, I read Dear Dawn, Eileen Warnos in her own words, and I gave that a three stars, and that's by Eileen Warnos herself, and I did not enjoy that at all. Um, she, she was a very strange lady. Please go, like I said, go down to um, the video for that and have a watch if you're into true crime and Eileen Warnos, because I was not into that at all. The next one I read after that was The Black Flamingo by Dean Ada, and I gave that a full five stars and I really enjoyed this book. It's a young adult book. It's about a boy who's struggling with his identity, not only um, his racial identity, but also his identity as a gay man um, growing up in a society uh, that is typically geared toward against gay men and especially um black gay men sort of thing and where he fits in in the world and i really enjoyed this book and i would recommend it to people and even young you know, like it is a young adult book and i would recommend it to probably like children between the age of 12 uh, 12 and up and then everybody else can read it too because it's just really good and i enjoyed that the next book I read was The End of Policing by Alex S. Vital. Um, and I gave that a five stars because what he does is he goes in there and he points out what's wrong with policing um, in the world and the US and how the history behind it and where it can change and where it can grow and how we can make the world a better place by not becoming police states basically. Next, I read Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, and I gave that a five stars because I really enjoyed this book. I did so much. It's about two sisters. Um, their father dies in a plane crash. Um, one lives in New York and one lives um, in the Caribbean, and they don't know about each other. And it's just about that story and about uh, life in general and how their lives are so different. Um, it was, it's an absolutely brilliant story. I did enjoy that. It's very much so. And that is also a young adult novel. So I'm trying to branch out and get into young adult or get into, dis, uh, get into other sections of reading. Next, I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Dilly Owens. I gave that four, I think it was a three and a half because I did like it up to a point and then I felt like the ending was forced and I was just not uh, completely blown away as some people were by that book. Um, I believe there is a movie being made about it. it made, it's being made into a movie. Um, if you want to get, uh, check out the book before the movie and see how the book of the movie varies, maybe they'll change the ending and make it a bit better. I don't know. Um, but that sort of thing. Actually, I'm gonna lie. I have gone back. I need to go back. And the David Mitchell book, Backstory. I read two David Mitchell books. This is where I forgot. The Backstory was the his biography. And I did give it four stars because I did enjoy it, but it wasn't my favorite. So that was his biography. Because after Where the Crawl Dogs Sing, um, oh, sorry, itchy nose. Um, I read another true crime book. It's The Night Stalker by Philip Carlo. I gave that a three stars because um, The Night Stalker is not something that intrigues me that much. Um, I think a lot of it was showboating. Um, and I go more in depth into it. Like I said, I need to stop saying this, but there is a video about it. Um, but the next one after that was Dishonesty is the Second Best Policy and Other Rules to Live By. And that's by David Mitchell. Now, that was the book where he's doing his Guardian articles or whatever articles the police are uh, that he for journals, magazines. And I think my dog just wants. Yeah, he did. OK. And um, that was the one that I didn't enjoy this month because it was out of context and things like that. So. Uh, that one was, I gave that one three stars. I mean, I did enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it as much. Next after that was The Chain. And that was, that is by Adrian McGinty. 
and I enjoyed that so much. That was such a good book. I just started it and I was just straight through it. It only took me, it took me like about a day to read from what I've got here. I started it on the 18th and I finished it on the 19th of, of June, I believe. So yeah, that was really quick. And because I was so into it. Uh, the one after that was uh, The Five Pilgrim Way, A S Historical and Spiritual Companion by Ian Bradley. I gave that a five stars because it is uh, basically a history book in regards to pilgrims, um, religious sites, and different uh, historical bits on what is now called The Five Pilgrim Way. They have built a, um, a hike that you can do in Fife uh, that covers these different historical landmarks. Um, you can't do it right now because of COVID. I mean, if you lived like within five miles, you could probably do a wee bit of it, but you can't do the whole thing just now. So that was that one. And the next one I read was Who Am I Again by Lenny Henry. And I gave that a five stars because I enjoyed it so much. There was a lot of, of stuff that you learn in it. It was, it was a good book and you learn a lot about his life and how he grew up. And it covers up to, I think, the early 80s. So um, I hope to see the next part of how he is doing um, everything. And just aside to say that he was the blob on the mass singer and he was amazing and I knew it was him and I loved it so much. Anyway, that's just being a super fan, but it is a really good book and you find out like about cultural differences and things like that uh, within the United Kingdom. The next book after I read that was the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I gave that a rating three. Uh, that's by Grady, Grady Hendrix. I didn't enjoy that as much as I'd like to. Um, and you know what to do. Um, next one after that was Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I gave that a four. I really did like it. Um, it wasn't a five-star book. I'm trying to stay off of too many five-star books because I want those books to be the ones that just grab me completely, but I really enjoyed this book. I need to start like um, having an actual scale instead of going, yeah, I really liked it, that sort of thing. Uh, next book after that was The Hate You Give uh, by Angie Thomas, and that was five stars, and I really enjoyed that book so much. That was a really good book. Um, I love that one. Um, after that, I read Superior, The Return of Race Science by Angela Senni, and I gave that four stars, and I really liked that book, and it gave us a lot of factual information and things like that, and I really suggest that you have a look at that because it's all about science and, like, the history of race and things like that. Next one I read was Someone's Story by B.A. Bellig. I think I might have given it a 4.5, but showing a 5 on here, so we'll just say 5. Um, that one was a really good one about a boy with mental health disorders, and I love, I did like that. And then I read To Be Continued by James Robertson, and that was a four star for me. And yeah, it's just an enjoyable book. It's a bit slow at the first part. That's the problem. It was a bit slow at the first part, but it picked up towards the end, and I really did like it. Um, I liked the latter half of it. Well, not the latter half. It's like the first third. And then the last two thirds were amazing and I really enjoyed it. Then I read The First Days As the World Dies uh, by Rhiannon Freider and I gave that a four star and there will be stuff to be said. And then I read How to Be Champion by Sarah Merlican and that was that is her autobiography and that was another four star for me. And then I read Am I Ugly by Michelle Ellman and I think I actually read that three and a half stars because I liked it but it was in the but I didn't like it that much uh because of the fact of the context it was a bit different for me then I read The Man Who Play With Fires Dig Lawson Larson's Lost Files Files and the Hunt for an Assassin by Jan Stoklasa and I gave that a three didn't really like that then I read The Guest List by Lucy Foley, and I gave that a four because it was all right up till you got to the end, and it just kind of ended, and I really need a proper ending. 
Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. And that was a five as well. Oh, well, that was a five and I really enjoyed that book so much. I've not actually seen the movie. Or did I watch the movie? Have I watched the movie since then? Oh, maybe you have watched the movie. I forgot because this was all reading I did while I was in the hospital as well. Yeah, no, I did watch the movie. Lies. I did watch the movie, but I like the book more than the movie. The book more stage, stage Lizzie than the movie. Then the next one was another true crime story, story and that was Deviant, the shocking true story of Ed Gein. The original cycle, Psycho by Harold Stetter. And I gave that a four. Um, yeah, that's really gruesome. That's all to say. Then I read So Lucky by Don O'Porter. And I gave that a five because I really enjoyed that book. Because it was about um, women comparing themselves to other women. And how we um, tell other people that they're so lucky. And we don't see ourselves in that way. And I really enjoyed that. Then I read Your Perfect Year by Charlotte Lucas. And I gave that a four star. Um, that was actually a really decent book. I quite enjoyed it. Then I read Forget Her Name by Jen, Jane Holland, and I gave that a three star. Didn't really enjoy that much. Um, I felt that it was unsympathetic to people with mental health disorders, and that's enough of that. Um, I read Grown Up Snacks by Marion Keys, and I gave that a five star because I absolutely enjoy it, and Marion Keys books is, Marion Keys books is my are my guilty pleasures. I absolutely enjoy that so much. Then I read 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup and I gave that a five stars because uh, it, it's just amazing to see a different side of that. I don't know, like, we don't know how exactly true the story is because it was written down by somebody else for him. I think actually he wrote most of it himself, but it was edited by somebody else and I don't know how much the editing went into that. Um, but because he could, but because he could read and write himself, so I'm not actually sure about that. But uh, go go and visit the roundup of that one um, because it's quite a good book. Um, after that, I read A Search for Belonging by Michael Fuller, and I gave that a five star because that showed um, Michael Fuller. Uh, I believe he was commissioner in the police force, and it showed his life from being a. Um, a child in care up to um, main, getting his roles and being a top policeman um, in the uh, London area in the UK. So that one really was so good. Um, a lot of the, the aspects of it really makes you think about what is going on because I think some people think, oh, the UK, it's not that bad with uh, racism and that but when you read that then it opens your mind up to how bad it was I mean because like people think like oh they uh stopped slavery here but everything a lot of things here were built upon the backs of slaves so I'm just saying that but anyway I would suggest reading that book uh, the next one was Deadly Waters by Dot Hutchison I gave that a four I imagine it was a three point five because it was just meh well it was it was good up until a point again it's the endings that always kill the books for me it's like this is not good then the next one I read was The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware that was a really good book it was very suspenseful I didn't know what was happening until I got to the end didn't figure it out and that one I gave a five star and the next one was The Killers of the Flower Moon the Osage Murders at the Birth of the FBI by David Gran. I really enjoyed this book. It gave me a lot of historical background knowledge. It gave me a lot of factual information. I am really uh, good about the, the details. I love a good detail. And that book was really enjoyable for that much. The next one is not a rated book. It's Overcoming Binge, binge Eating, 2nd Edition, The Proven Program, Why You Binge and How You Can Stop by Christopher G. Fairburn. Well, I've got it and I've read it and I'm not sure it's the best. It was the one for me. So we're moving on from that. Um, the next one I read was The Perfect Father, 
the true story of Chris Watts, his all-American family, and a shocking murder by John Glatton. That's got four stars on it here. And, well, just look up Chris Watts and you'll know what that's about. And I'm not going to discuss it because, again, that's a very sensitive topic. The next one I read was Welcome to the United States of Anxiety, Observations from a Reforming Neurotic by Jen Lancaster. And I gave that four stars. And I think that book was like really, it was a nice book um, to read. It had like ideas and how overcoming things in, in the book. It's like, this is what I did and this is how I overcome it. Overcame, overcome it. No, that's not a word, overcame it. Next one I read is Fighting to Survive as the World Dies number two by Rhiannon Freyden. Freighter, and then I went on to go to Siege by Rhiannon Freighter, and After Siege, also by Rhiannon Freighter, and I gave them all five stars because I really enjoyed the series, and I think it, that that series is great. After that was another true crime book, but this time it was about the Mafia, so it's the Snotch Call Club, My Life Inside the New York Mafia. I gave that a rating of four, but I really think it was a 3.5 because I enjoyed it to an extent, but it was very, um, I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, it was very like off-putting that, that one. Uh, next one after that was the Thursday Murder Club uh, by Richard Osman. I really enjoyed old ladies uh, doing detective work in a care home. That was absolutely brilliant. Well, it wasn't a care home, it was a chime at home. And that was number five, that was a five star for me. And then we read from the O's House, the Alan Partridge pod podcast. That was the Audible original uh, by Alan Partridge, who is Steve Coogan. And if you don't know who Alan Partridge is, go have a look. And I gave that one a five as well. And then um, it was No Shame by Tom Allen. And I really enjoy Tom Allen as a comedian. I found the book quite good. It was funny at times, but also um, there was some more uh serious moments and uh it was basically his life story and that's it was just brilliant so i gave that one a five now the next book i read was also for the true crime book club um i did not rate this book um because i felt it wasn't right to rate the book uh it was a stolen life by jc goodard um duggard goodard duggard um the girl who was um kidnapped and held prisoner for I think 18 years and I felt like I couldn't judge this book because this book was about her own experience as being um, a subject of kidnapping and held against her will for that amount of time and the things that happened to her so I really didn't want to write that book at all. Um, the next book I read was another true crime book. It was Imperfect Justice Prosecuting, Prosecuting Casey Anthony and that's by Jeff Ashton and I gave that one a four probably 3.5 because I did like the book but um there was some aspects of it I thought could be better um I'm not going to go into that one either um those two I didn't do a video for I don't think I've done a video for a few of them um just because I didn't do one for the JC Goddard book and I didn't do one about the Casey Anthony because um the type of crimes involved and I probably am not going to do um, book reviews if there's like um, child abuse uh, or anything like that involved uh, with it because it's not a subject that I am comfortable with talking about. Um, that leaves me up to where I'm at now. Um, one, two, three, four. I've only done five books <laughs> since the beginning of January I could do better however even some of these books don't have any rings because they're books for university so that's where we are let's just go and have a look at our stats for 2020 so it's 62 books and I read 20,533 pages the shortest book was 144 pages, and that was The United States of Absurdity. The longest book was The Iliad by Homer, which was 710. The average length of the book was 331 pages. 
The most popular was Where the Crawdads Sing by Sing by Delia Owens, and that has two million people have shelved that book. And the least popular is The Five Pilgrim Way with seven people shelving. My average rating for 2020 was 4.4. The highest rated on Goodreads is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So that is my 2020 wrap up. I hope you enjoyed listening to my ramblings. Again, please go look and watch the other videos. If you want more in depth on book knowledge, then those are the ones for you. Going forward, I will try to be reading more books and I will try to be doing more of the actual reviews on books and what I've read. However, currently in this day and time, I am probably not going to get around to reading most of them until the summer months continue and whatever happens then happens then. But for now, we have got books, we have read books, we have read five so far that I could probably tell you about. We also have a load of books stacked into my Kindle. If you want to be so kind to as sit here and wait for me, I will try to find what books I have on my Kindle. Let's find out. Kindle. And left to read on the Kindle will be, oh, I have quite a few. Um, I have not finished. Let me just put these in order. Sort. Reset. Okay, yeah. All right, so I need to finish Do Not Feed the Clown by Matt Nagan. I have to finish reading that. I have downloaded The Vanishing Hat by Britt Bennett. Uh, Perfectly Impossible by Elizabeth Toff, I believe that says. The Haunting of Bryn Wilder by Wendy Webb. Uh, the Last Resort by Susie Holiday. Confessions of a Curious Bookseller, Elizabeth Green, Debbie Herbert, Not One of Us, Hadley and Grace, a novel by C uh, Suzanne Redfern, uh, Gone Viking by Helen Russell, Devil's Knot, that was something I was supposed to read last month, but I didn't do it, uh, by Mara Le Leverett, and The Psychopath, A True Story by Mary Turner Thompson. Those are the current books I have in there. Now I do have other books um, on my Audible as well. So I don't, ooh, saying that is I am getting a box uh, that I hope to be unboxing soon with you guys, um, which um, is going to be excellent because I'm getting a book subscription and fingers crossed we'll, we'll be able to do that. But I need to get all these read as well as do my dissertation and some more essays. And then I will be done with school. Hopefully I will be getting into something else, but fingers crossed and watch this space. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this new space. I am in my living room, um, which you can tell I really like flowers. I like Captain America. I like candles. That's my son's teddy bear because he has to be there because it's unbearable. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope to see you next time. Uh, lots of love from me to you and stay safe and stay happy if you can. Um, be kind, um, lots of love and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.